messy and opportunistic. In other words, messy because there's so many things happen, opportunistic because with the right frame of mind, one can make use of the mess to be opportunistic. Anything's possible because you, if you think back in history, there's so many things that we thought we could never do. Think of all the different platforms we have now and the amount of technology that's available. I think anything is possible and I love, I love the changes we're seeing now, the natural user interface. Even as you think about engaging technology, it's point and click and keyboards. But now with voice and gesture and touch, I think that's just going to enable so many exciting scenarios. We're going to start to see that, that we're, nature is a great designer. Um, it, it actually does a whole lot of things we're trying to do now. It never does one-way chemical reactions. Everything, it's always two-way chemical reactions so that a, the waste from one system is the feedstock for another. Nature runs off sunlight. Uh, nature is, is sufficiently complex but not too complex. Um, there's a, nature is extremely efficient. So the first one is natural. The second word is digital. Because what we're, getting, what we're seeing is there's, there's a massive, that, that overlay of, of, you might say, information and knowledge is going to start to be, is going to continue to drive things. In fact, it's when the natural and the digital converge um, is when we start to really see what the future will look like. The future world I look at is one that we have to be very much driven by science, by those who have the gift of being able to look forward and uh, assess what life might be like and to the extent that it's unpleasant, start doing something about it now. Unless Ultimately, the way we connect in our common purpose is not about advancing the broader good. We won't be building sustainable enterprises. A lot of problems today are continuing to manifest because they're incredibly complicated and no one has a good solution to them. Right? Climate change, great example of where a lot of people realise that there's something wrong. It's very hard to see what we can do in a way that won't compromise quality of life now. It's an incredible imperative to find in both innovative solutions to solve it, but also innovative ways to communicate the problem to people who don't want to engage. I think Australia's got a fabulous history of innovation. Uh, the black box, uh, refrigerator, the hills hoist. We do have a great um, fabric there that is, I think, the basis of an innovative technology and an innovative economy. And the economies that nail this, that get this right, are going to be the economies that prosper in the future. So really, that's the challenge that we have here, is, is, is putting in place a holistic perspective on how we shift the thinking and also support people to make that change. So I don't have a quick answer for you, but I, I do believe it is the fundamental question, that if we can crack the code on this one, we get workplaces that are more diverse, more inclusive, more productive, better with technology, and more sustainable, the list goes on. It's not so much creativity, I think, because, you know, in all honesty, if I, you know, if I, if I just put a beer mat on my head, that would be arguably creative. I think it's ingenuity. It's the, problem, it's the ability to solve problems quickly with imagination.